guys, it's Mitch here from the DIYrecordingstudio.com and today we're going to look at part two of the Sound Sculptor DIY kit that I was building last week. It's the MP573 and it carefully recreates that famous Neve architecture with circuit design. It's got those famous Carnhill transformers in it and it's part of what's integral to that uh, sound when you're using those preamps. So this product from Sound Sculptor was a DIY kit it's super amazing. Um, I really enjoyed the build. This is part two if you want to follow along. If you missed part one, I'll put the link down below and up here. And if you're interested in anything from Sound Sculptor, make sure you look in the description below. I'll put their website there as well. And don't forget, if you like this video, hit like, hit subscribe, but let's get into it. All right, so welcome back. Let's get into part two of the... Uh, Sound Sculptor MP573 Neve style preamp build. And the next component to go in is the switches that are for the 48 volt phantom power, the polarity flip, and the impedance uh, and line switch. And what I'm doing here for the 48 phantom power um, switch is taping it to the board like I did before, just to help hold it in place while I solder the first leg. Um, it really just helps keep the component in place. Now these switches are a bit of a tight fit and they might stay in place anyway, but um, I still do it just to make sure that the alignment's correct. And then I'll check the alignment on the top of the board and then take the tape off and then solder the rest of the legs. And then for the rest of the switches, it's basically just rinse and repeat. I lined them up next to each other and because the legs are a bit more of a tight fit, I was able to just place the next switch in the series and then um, without taping it, I could comfortably solder one of the legs and then check the alignment and then solder the rest of the legs in place. And you can see that I did that for both of the switches and those last two switches are the silver ones and then the original one is the 48 volt one which is pretty obvious because it's got the red little tab on the switch. And then the next component to add is the potentiometer for the output gain and you have to put this little bracket on it first to solder it to the actual PCB board and hold it in place. So there's that little bracket you saw me put on there. And then there's a washer that you have to put on and a nut. And once you place those on, it's ready to insert into the PCB holes. And they advise you basically to solder the two central pins first. And then once again, check that the alignment is good on the PCB board because you want it to sit nice and flat on the PCB. If it's not nice and flat on the PCB, when you uh, attach the face plate later on, you might not be able to get uh, the alignment correct. So you want to make sure that potentiometer is nice and flat and even. And then once that's done with uh, those couple of pins soldered and you've checked it all, you can solder the rest of the legs. And then the next part is this grey hill switch, which is going to be the input gain switch. And it's a really, really nice switch that you can solder to the board. Um, they've got really small uh, pins, so you have to be quite careful with them. And in the instructions, it talks about um, these adjustable stop pins. And in this version, it doesn't have those. They're already in there and you don't have to muck around with those. And they can be quite tricky anyway, which is a reason why they don't do them anymore. But basically, you put this in the board. Be careful not to bend the legs on these. The pins on those, those leg pins are just really thin. And you want to be real careful in trying to get it into the board. And then, same as the previous switch, you just solder the um, two opposite pins. And then check the alignment. And I use tape once again to try and hold that alignment better. And then check it and then make sure it's all good and then solder the rest of the legs. And um, the main tricky part with this component is just that uh, the pins are quite close together and um, the solder pads on the PCB are quite small. So you just have to be careful not to um, basically cross any of those pads with too much solder. And after that are the regulators. Uh, there's two of them to put in the board and you have to be careful with the orientation of these. Uh, there's a line there marked for where the back part of the regulator, the silver bit, has to be facing. Um, so you want to make sure that they are 
facing the right way on the board uh, before you solder them. And they're basically responsible for the output voltage at that point in the circuit. And then the next component to do are the large electrolytic capacitors. And those are just bigger versions of the electrolytics that we did earlier. And they're polarized the exact same way that those previous electrolytics are. So there's a white strip where the negative pin is and the positive pin is the longer leg on those electrolytic capacitors. So you've got to make sure that the longer lead goes into the plus hole and um, that they're orientated correctly. And then you just bend the legs to hold them in place and then solder them. And then the next component is this power transistor and it is actually a little component that looks a little bit like the regulators um, but it's a transistor and it's got to be clipped into a heat sink and by clipped it really uh, in the directions it says clipped but it really means you've got to kind of try and slide it in place and then it's held quite tightly it's quite hard to get that transistor in the heat sink um, without kind of scratching it and stuff and i was trying to be really careful with it so just know that's a bit of an issue when trying to get the transistor into the heat sink but then after that uh, basically you just secure the heat sink into the board first and then you bend the transistor legs to line up with the tabs on the back side of the board and once they're on those pads um, you can cut them slightly shorter because they'll hang over and then you solder each of those three legs and just make sure that the heat sink is soldered in nice and tight and that the legs um, you don't run that solder over the pads because they're quite close together. And then once that's done, uh, we're up to the exciting part of the build, which is the input and output transformers. And there's these PCBs that you need to work with for the input transformer first. There's a front PCB and a back PCB, and they both have these headers. And basically, you need to make sure the headers on these are kept at a nice, neat, right angle flush to the PCB board. Otherwise, you're going to have trouble inserting them on the main PCB board. Um, so once again, I used uh, electrical tape to hold the headers in place and then soldered a leg and made sure the orientation was okay. And then uh, made sure it was at a nice flush right angle and then soldered the rest of the legs. And that's the same for the rear PCB for the input transformer. And you can see here that basically it's the exact same sort of thing, but there's less legs to solder. You only solder half as many legs for the um, back PCB side. And when you cut these pins after soldering them, it's important to cut them nice and close to the PCB board. And once you've done that, you need to remove the screws from the input transformer and um, that's so you can fasten those uh, PCB boards to the actual transformer. Um, it's important to make sure that the numbers on those PCBs for the front one line up with the numbers on the actual pins on the input transformer there. And then you need to place the back PCB on the other side um, and the not visible text has to be what um, is hidden by the um, transformer itself. So the not visible side of the PCB connects to the transformer and then you should see the sound sculptor label on the other side and that means you've assembled it correctly. Um, and then you need to put the Carnhill transformer into the main PCB board um, and you've got to make sure that you just don't push too hard when trying to get this in. If you've orientated your headers correctly, it should slide in pretty nicely, um, but those headers can be fragile sometimes, so you don't want to break any of those pins. I should also note that um, those pins, once they're in the main PCB board, don't protrude much um, through the PCB, back of the PCB. So you want to make sure that you use enough solder and that you're getting a nice solid connection um, from the PCB board to those pins. And after that, it is time to do the uh, output transformer PCB and it's very similar. Um, you need to put that header in, tape it to the board, hold it in place and then solder the pins. And then you need to take the output transformer, the Carnhill output transformer, and measure the wires to approximately 14 centimeters and strip the ends of those. So 
measure them out from 14 centimeters, make a cut and then strip about five millimeters off them. So you have a nice exposed wire. And then once that's done, you need to thread each of the wires through to that PCB board that we were working on before. And as you can see, there's a little um, code for which color wire goes where. So you need to make sure that um, you insert those correctly. And after that, there's these little jumpers that we need to put on the uh, components we soldered in earlier, one at CN1 and one at JMP3. The CN1 jumper is there in place of uh, the insert lead that you might use if you're going to use one of the Sound Sculptor EQs that insert at that point. JMP3 one is there, but will be removed after testing and then placing in the DI. And then that's basically it for the main PCB board. Um, it's all the components are in, the major transformers are in, and um, it's just the DI that needs to be done later after testing. So uh, the next thing to do is actually brush the PCB board clean. So you wanna get that backside nice and clean of any solder or little solder bits or flux. Um, so I use a toothbrush and some isopropyl alcohol and give it a good scrub. And then I might also check some of the wires if they need to be snipped better, or I'll do a visual inspection for any solder joints that might be not 100% and fix those up as well. And then it's time to assemble the output transformer, the big one, to the backplate. And this backplate has four countersunk screws that go into the backside of it. And you insert those in and then a spacer on the side where the transformer will sit. And then after that, you can place the transformer on that side plate and fasten it with uh, the four uh, screws and self-locking nuts. And it's important to tighten it without actually crushing or damaging the frame holding that transformer um, in place. So uh, don't over tighten it. And then after that, we've got these four spacers and washers and we're gonna use them to secure the main PCB to that side plate. And basically you don't wanna tighten them. You just want it to hold the PCB in place. Then you wanna remove the nut on the gray hill rotary switch that we've inserted already. And then you want to assemble the front plate and be careful of the LED light that we've already soldered to that main PCB board. And it fastens to the side plate with uh, two black little uh, M36 millimeter countersunk screws. And once that's uh, positioned nicely over all your switches, you want to put that nut on the gray hill switch on the uh, front plate side. Um, and then if it's all sitting nicely and nicely flush, you can tighten those four spaces that we inserted before. And then we need to take the output transformer wires that we soldered to that little PCB board and twist it several times so that those leads don't pick up too much noise from the board. And we're then going to insert that to the PCB board itself. The main PCB board has that connector um, that we need to plug it into. And I should note that on the first of these pair of preamps that I built, um, I didn't get the header as flush when I soldered it to the little PCB board and it was quite difficult to insert this PCB um, correctly. So make sure once again that you have soldered that header nice and flush to that little PCB board because it'll make this part much easier. And then last but not least, we need to attach the front dial. So those knobs there, um, there's the input one and the output one. And it's important to make sure that you turn the dials all the way anti-clockwise or clockwise, whichever way you want to do it. Um, just know that they've turned all the way one way and then align the switch with the corresponding uh, measurement and then you just tighten them with the hex key uh, there's these little screws in there that can be a little fiddly but use the hex key to tighten them up nice and tight so that they don't come loose once you start using them and that's the main board done the main pcb is finished um, it's starting to look like the finished product the finished preamp and it's pretty exciting you can see those awesome carnhill transformers the input and output transformers that are such a part of that neve mic preamp sound um but such a great looking uh preamp already uh we'll do one more video this is part two 
Um, make sure you stick around for part three where we do the assembly for the DI board that then inserts into the preamp as well. So thanks again guys for stopping by and watching this video. Don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe. I'm Mitch from the DIYrecordingstudio.com and I'll catch you soon.